Okay, Scout, you ready to go? Okay, there's Penny. She's ready to go. Come on. Thank you subscribers and viewers for watching this channel and for supporting my efforts to bring research and information to treasure hunters and to historical researchers, to recreationists. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy doing. Uh, it's, it's not very economically feasible, but it's, it's a lot of fun for me. If there's things that you would like to see or are interested in seeing that I could easily do or that could help you with, feel free to contact me or, or leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it if you support my channel by purchasing uh, the merchandise that we have on our uh, print-on-demand information below. And if you feel so inclined, you're you're welcome to to send support via uh, PayPal. Recently, I had an individual, uh, Clinton Concord, who sent a hundred dollars, and I want to thank him personally. And I sent him a, uh, a t-shirt from my collection in thanks. And I'd like to also thank those who have encouraged me, who have sent me uh, emails and different letters. I can't always get right to them. You know, I have to make a living too. And, and so this is just a thing that I do on the side that it doesn't bring me very much money. Or, but it is kind of rewarding and it is a lot of fun. I would like to make more video. I would like to do, I would like to produce more content. I'd like to take more trips into the field, but my time is valuable and only through this channel growing and, and getting support from my viewers can that happen. I would like to go out and find other like-minded individuals and talk about them and collaborate on projects with them, have interviews with them, and bring that information to you but I can't do it without your help and your support and so it really helps feedback in a direction and things that you're interested in um, one of my big pet peeves is I really like using quality music in my videos and and things that I enjoy but because of YouTube's restrictions and because of the copyright strikes and things which in my opinion are ridiculous you know but quality music all it does is it pushes fans of that music to go watch more of their videos and and listen to their music so um, but that's one of my pet peeves is is being able to use quality music and I have copyright free music I've got to use over and over again or find other avenues for it so if anybody knows or understands where you can find good music and uh, that I could use on on my videos that would be great I do my best to bring you factual information as much of the information about our research as, as I can without you know giving away things that people have entrusted to me or things that we're working on that that need to have location security or or uh, protection but I hope in the future that we can bring you more metal detecting, uh, more diving. We have some. We have an operation where we're gonna we're gonna go looking in some freshwater lakes. And have a lot of research that backs up all of our efforts. Anyway, thanks for your support. I have had a couple of individuals say that they are not getting notifications, that they have sub subscribed but they're not getting notifications when I put out new videos and things. So make sure you not only subscribe, but you click the notification bell and that you make a comment and that you share the video. That helps the, the YouTube's, you know, logarithm or whatever it is that they do, who knows, it's, it's cryptic. And if you've done those things, if you've liked and shared and and subscribed and commented and you're still not getting my notifications then we know that YouTube has violated their terms of service and and they do that I mean you know it's, it's no secret that I'm I lean conservative and you know some of my topics are, are controversial and so 
it wouldn't surprise me a bit if YouTube is uh, violating their terms of service and discriminating against me or my viewers. So, anyway, if you see that, maybe, you know, write to YouTube, complain, whatever. Uh, other than that, we, we're, all we can do is keep pr producing quality content and hoping that our subscribers will like and share. Thank you. Good morning, my fellow treasure hunters. Uh, and Happy New Year. This evening is going to be the new year, and I hope your new year is better than the old one. Anyway, today I want to maybe clear up some confusion and offer a few more observations uh, than I did yesterday on the Curse of Oak Island. I think there are some things that are not talked about. To me, they're the elephant in the room on the subject. And I, I don't understand why they haven't been discussed more uh, openly or, or in more detail on Oak Island. It seems apparent to me that I think it was probably a British military operation at one time. It possibly could be a Templar oper operation from an earlier time. If it is multiple occupations, it's obviously linked to the strategic location of Oak Island off the coast and a shipping near a, a very prominent shipping lane. Uh, it was a st strategic location. So I think it was either a military operation, a Templar operation, which could also be termed a military operation, or a secret cache of a king or an elite person. The two things that bother me about it is if you were going, if it was simply a cash site of something of value, whether historic value, of great monetary value, you wouldn't go through the effort to create ship's wharfs and stone paths and clearing areas and bringing oxen onto the island and have, you know, there's ox shoes everywhere. If you want to do the math, let's do some simple math. Some simple treasure math. Let's say a pilot, a pi pilot, let's say a pirate rolls up to the beach and let's say he has a, an astronomical amount of loot that he is going to bury on an island. Let's say he has 30,000 pounds. Well, let's make it simpler. Let's say he, he has even more. He has 100,000 pounds of gold, silver, jewels. I mean, it, it'd be an astronomical amount that even a king of, of great wealth in his day may not have had 100,000 pounds of gold and silver and precious jewels. You know, which begs the question, where did this supposed loot come from? I mean, where did it, it had to have disappeared from someone to show up somewhere else, for instance, on Oak Island. So the pirate rolls up to the beach and he's got 100,000 pounds of loot that he wants to hide. And he has 100 men. He has 100 men, he has 100,000 pounds of loot. Each man only needs to move 1,000 pounds, right? 100 men times 1,000, 100,000. So if each man is capable of carrying 100 pounds, which most rugged outdoor individual men can do, I mean you look on the in the WAN ads, the job listings for construction workers and one of the things they'll say in there is must be capable of lifting 100 pounds repeatedly throughout the day or some similar, some similar thing. And so if, if you have 100 pirates and they need to move 100,000 pounds, each pirate only needs to take 10 trips with 100 pounds to move 1,000 pounds each, total of 100,000 pounds. It doesn't take a two-year construction of a stone wharf and ox carts and secret paths and all this stuff, bringing a ship into the swamp and burning it and, and building a path to the money pit and then burying it to get a hundred thousand pounds from the coast, you know, a couple hundred yards inshore and, and, and cashed into a money pit. So 
each man would have to make 10 trips with 100 pounds to be 1,000 pounds times 100 men is 100,000 pounds. So why do they need to have ox carts and ship's wharves and all these things that are obviously have been created on Oak Island that took months with hundreds if not more men and perhaps even years to create? Well, the easy explanation is, is this was a military operation. It, it, when you're doing military operations, you have endless labor from men who are idle doing nothing, and you put them to work to keep them out of trouble. Uh, you're building a base for protection, a naval base, or, or you're trying to start a settlement. Um, if it was the Templars from, from an earlier occupation, uh, they were escaping from the Spanish crown and from all these other uh, countries and and kings that were trying to destroy them and steal their loot, steal their, their treasure, and they could have been establishing a new op base of operations. But they obviously were not just moving 100,000 pounds of loot from the sea to the shore to hide it. There had to be more going on here than that. It, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, they didn't need oxen to move their loot I mean, the amount of ox shoes and the amount of oxen and ox carts and paths that, that they're finding on Oak Island, they could have moved enough weight to create and build one of the pyramids in Egypt. And obviously they didn't take and create a pyramid, you know, that much loot and shove it down the, the money pit hole. It was obviously a base of operation. And my personal theory is is that it was a business port that it was get, that it was built constructed and set up to be a port for working on ships or shipping timber masts or for resurfacing damaged ships you know you know the pine tar kiln for instance it's been speculated that it was built to you know slather a box full of treasure and shove it down into the money pit possibly that was one of the purposes, but it obviously had a bigger point or purpose. You wouldn't have to build a pine tar kiln to garner enough resin to cover a large chest. All you would have to do is build a fire, bring a bunch of sapwood and some metal pans, break off the sapwood, melt it, burn it down, get the resin, and, and uh, cover the, the box. No, this was a business or a industrial size operation where they were probably retarring ships, bringing ships into this created safety port in what was now the swamp. They were bringing ships in, they were resurfacing them, they were probably bringing masts from the mainland, either floating them in or using the oxen to get the masts from the mainland and bring them onto the island and retooling and and, ser and serving ships. Maybe they were making potash on the mainland, which is the result of burning large amounts of wood. It was used in pottery and all kinds of uh, uh, fertilizer and things over in, in Britain. There was much more going on here than simply hiding a treasure. Now, if you had a huge, booming industrial operation on an island that was con convenient to a shipping lane, you would have to be storing large amounts of gold and silver and trade goods that were being used in your business. You would be taking in money, you would be taking in gold and silver and items in exchange for your services, and perhaps that's how the money pit started. Maybe it was an ancient banking system of protecting the treasure. Maybe the money pit was protected. Maybe they had a place where the money was brought down, put into the money pit, and guarded by soldiers, and it had added means of security on the surface. That makes a lot more sense to me than a large Templar treasure or any other treasure being put down in the money pit and 
with a water trap to, you know, protect it from being stolen. I mean, the very act of putting priceless things in an area where they can come in contact with salt water is counterproductive. Obviously, no matter how much pine tar or or waterproofing protection you put onto a box of any kind, whether it's metal, wood, stone, cement, at some point the salt water, the sea water is going to permeate that and it's going to destroy everything that is inside. Salt water, the only thing that salt water doesn't affect is gold. Everything else will affect. Silver will tarnish, copper will tarnish, it'll totally erode paper, wood, um, books of, of any value are, are going to be just destroyed by the salt water and there's no way in time with pressure with salt water to keep the water out. It's going to corrode anything you put it in aside from an entirely you know, gold cyst with something inside. It, 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 there's just no way to keep the water out. And so if there was something of great value I do not believe that the Templars or anybody else for that matter would put it anywhere that it could possibly come in contact with the very thing that they're trying to protect it from and that's destruction or discovery. They're not, going to, they're not going to destroy it in their attempt to protect it. Now, if they had something of great religious, historical um, value to mankind, like the Ark of the Covenant, the, the menorah, all these Jewish artifacts that are considered among the most valuable, treasured, and priceless artifacts in the world, I can see them hiding, burying, or concealing these things but not in a situation where they would ever have the opportunity to come in contact with salt water for any reason. So if they did hide something like that, the money pit was a decoy. If there was treasure in the money pit, at one time, in my view, it was for secure keeping for the operation of whatever was going on on the island, which I believe was industrial ship maintaining, perhaps building, um, servicing, uh, or it was a military operation where they're bringing military ships and, and things in there and, and working on them. Nothing else seems to make any sense to what they're finding on Oak Island. Now, um, I, I have a question about many of the artifacts that they have found. There's no way for them to prove that these artifacts originated on Oak Island that they're pulling out of the ground. Um, I have serious doubts or reasons for doubt. I mean these these reality shows are notorious for creating narratives to keep their show alive, to keep their funding going. Um, you know it's obvious that there is enough truth to what's going on on Oak Island that you could easily slip in these things to keep people interested and take the narrative in an entirely different direction, say the Templars. Um, if any of you are readers of mystery books or murder mysteries or or western mysteries, you've heard of the author Tony Hillerman. And in one of his classic uh, novels, his book, Dance Hall of the Dead, it's a very, very good novel. It's about uh, crimes that occurred on the Navajo Reservation and, and the mystery and, and very well constructed and entertaining. And they have factual information in there on how artifacts, in this particular book it talks about how on this particular archaeological site, artifacts were being planted to come to a particular narrative to further an agenda of an anthropologist who was trying to make a name for himself. Get money, get funding, whatever. And he was using a long metal rod that had a hollow thing at the end and he could push it down into the ground and twist it and pull it up and it would deposit these artifacts at various areas and levels, depths, in front of their, their digging operation and that these things would in time be found in the path of where the operation was going 
and be recovered in situ and it would be entered into the record and look like it was a genuine artifact. I have I would like to see the History Channel, the production company, whatever, make statements on a regular basis attesting to the authenticity of the things that are going on on Oak Island. Um, these companies need to take into consideration that artifact host, hoax is fraud and it's a crime to manipulate plant or art alter artifacts or place them out of context and perpetuate his, his, historical fraud. That's a felony. And so if anybody from these, these uh, the History Channel or the subsidiaries or the filming company is ever found caught or any behind the scenes person comes forward with this, that is a, a felony that is uh, punishable with severe fines and jail time. Um, and I hope they're not do doing that. So I would like to see the History Channel make a statement, basically the small print, before or after every show, stating that the things that are happening on this show are factual, they're unrehearsed, they're not created for a narrative or for entertainment purposes. And, you know, until that happens, there's always going to be uh, well, there's going to be a lot more speculation about the authenticity of the show. So as much as I like it and enjoy it, it I just have to take it as an entertainment, uh, for entertainment purposes. However, when I start to find things that align with things I'm working on and that I find organically in my area that seem to align with things that I see on the History Channel, uh, Oak Island, it starts to, you know, it really starts to kind of mess with my head because perhaps the things that are happening on the show are, are factual. Are they all factual? I don't know. I guess you have to make your own judgments about that. But I have found certain sites and things that I do not believe now are Spanish or uh, related. I do believe that they are more Knights Templar or perhaps somebody mimicking some of those things but I know as a fact that they're not recent you know they're they're hundreds or uh, hundreds of years old or older in, in several cases and at some point I'm gonna talk about and show and reveal those things when we put the technology in the area and are convinced that we can't find find what's there or, as I believe in the case of Oak Island, that whatever may have been there uh, may have been recovered. You know, I, I think that if they were using Oak Island as a, a deposit, a depository, if that was their security system for the banking system of the island while it was uh, involved in, you know, a shipping business, a military expedition, you know, the payroll operation of, of this military operation, that they would have obviously taken the treasure with them when they left. Now there's always the possibility that whatever it was that it was destroyed or attacked by natives or by another military group or people. Um, we have evidence all over the island of, of charcoal. Um, some of the charcoal that they, they found dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. Obviously, this could have been from Native American uh, occupation of the island instead of Knights Templar or, you know, the French or the Jesuits or somebody like that or Spanish. It, it could be Native American occupation before these groups came into the area. And it could also be Native Americans that destroyed the occupation that was there, that drove them away. Um, the Indians may have burned up everything that was on the island, may have attacked them and drove them off the island. Maybe there weren't any survivors. Maybe all the survivors or the survivors were taken hostage or, you know, were executed and thrown into the ocean or buried. We don't know, but whatever the case is, the mystery of Oak Island is that there is not 
a real historical record of what happened there, which leads us to believe that it was a, you know, a secret operation. It was, it was, uh, you know, it was an operation that was not known or or accounted for by any crown or military. And so, was it a, you know, a deep state, a a, a Templar operation? Um, some elite, some king or elite person hiding some of their loot or treasure. Uh, I hope I hope we get more answers.